Hi folks, Harvey's still caged up in his basement, so given that I'm bored, I was asked a um, question from a buddy of mine, a fellow YouTuber, on timing a 200S motor, and I figured I'd make it so easy that we'll all remember it forever, okay? By the way, this is still, like, slippery as heck. As a matter of fact, it's even icing up over here on the way in. Um, so... It's like 32 degrees and raining, which makes it freezing rain. Uh, just not. I mean, look at the see, see how this is like slush. So it's all slush coming in. So the garage door is probably going to freeze in place. You can see how my uh, little French drain is doing the proper thing there. The right, water's going into it and going down, but yeah, it's all. It's all iced up along there. It's supposed to cool off tonight, so I can have quite this warmth, th so to speak. This 35 degrees isn't supposed to last long, so I'm going to have quite the ice skating rink out there. I do have some sand. It's in the tug, which means uh, i got to go break a hip before I could uh, get to it. But... I guess that'll be tomorrow's problem. Anyway, let me show you guys how to how to time up one of these things. I'm also going to say parental guidance. So if anybody here really has a, uh, a concern about having their sensibilities offended, please, you can uh, shut down now. And here's a little view of the of the nice fire as you turn off your cam. Um, so, let's talk about timing up one of these engines. The first thing you have to look at is the flywheel. The flywheel needs to be put on, the key needs to be in place, because everything worries about where your cylinder is, where your crank and where your cylinder is. And you can see with this nice cut off engine that I have here, right, that I am right at top dead center, right? There I am, top dead center. On top dead center, there are a couple of marks on this flywheel. And one of them is a T and a line and an F and a line. Forget the F and the line. Worry about the T and the line for now. Okay, so with the cylinder all the way up, as you can see it is in this case, you got this little divot right there right and if I'm able to show this to you which is hard because there's some rust on the flywheel here um, let me get all my stuff set up well I don't know if you guys could see it but the T is a little bit toward the right and the line should be exactly right. The line should be right here. Okay. And normally what you do is you take this cap off and you look down and you can see that. I've never had any trouble luck getting these caps off. They're almost always stuck. You know, 35 years goes by and there you are. So, once again, T in the line and the line is lined up right there with that little divot. That little divot thing you see sticking up. Okay, you're at top dead center. What that means up above, okay, is that your lobes are down. Okay, see how that lobe and that lobe are down? And why should that make sense to you? If the lobes were up, one of the valves would be open, wouldn't it? And if this was all smashed into place, that means one of your valves would be smashing into your cylinder, right? Or into your piston. You don't want that. So remember, lobes down. Okay? So, lobes down, your cam's in place. Put the gear on, right? Now, this gear could go one of two ways, right? It could go with the little 
there's a little circle right there circle could be up or circle could be down if you put it circle up right when you go to time it by putting that guy on and putting the circle right matched up to that right you guys could see that right the circle's got to be matched up to that right so if you put it on upside down what's going to happen once again your valves are going to be open when your cylinder when your piston is up and that's going to be very bad for things so circle and let me make sure that i can show you guys what the circle looks like see the little circle there one side has a circle and that side down there has no circle so circle up lobes down and you can see the little divot off to the side here I don't even need the flashlight to show it to you see that little guy right there see how that's a little bit further this way okay so that's how you know that top dead center right bang 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 lobes down circle up and you should have that thing off to the side okay now you have the engine timing correct as in your valves are all proper and everything is kosher with that I noticed the F mark right the F mark to get to the F mark you have to turn this backwards just a little bit right and my problem is it's going to want to drop but you got to turn this backwards a little bit by turning that backwards what does that mean that means you're moving the firing to a little bit before top dead center because it takes a second for the gasoline to explode and send everything downward you don't want the cylinder past top dead center and on its way down on its own when it fires because then you lose part of the power stroke you want really want the full detonation to hit just barely as the cylinder is crossing top dead center if it happens before the cylinder crop crosses top dead center that's when you get the pinging because the cylinder has to fight the explosion on its way up and back down again but just as you're crossing the top if it goes boom and you get all your power that's a good thing because then you got the maximum stroke so there you go after you get the whole t thing done lobes down you know this thing in the right place everything all set up then you move it backwards slightly and i recommend putting a wire in it and holding it in place now you're going to set the firing and i have a second example for the firing second engine right that's the nice thing about having a horde got engines all over the place see how that's all lined up nice right to fire you need the magnet up and you need the CDI and the um, advance to be perfectly lined up you also got to make sure that you know you got a spring on here that's actually working right if you do that and it doesn't go back to place well that's going to cause you trouble and obviously the CDI moves right you got a couple of screws you can loosen that guy and that guy right and you can move the uh, CDI around to make everything right so you move this back to where you got the F let's see if I can show that to you it'd be a little harder or maybe not There's your little divot guy right there. And you want to set it up so that the F is right on there. I think you guys can see it. Right? So you got the F, and then you got the line slightly to the left of the F. That should be lined up exactly with that. And when that happens, you'll be right there, and your timing's all set up. And this is the parental guidance part. Basically, you, when you set your timing right cam lobes down man up it makes it look like you're having a little 
little visit with your wife and she's on top there right so cam lobes down man up remember this needs to be up right magnetic up you need your timing marks up whether you're going for the firing or for the top dead center right so remember the way this works is cam lobes down man up everything else up all you need to remember piece of cake right there you go a nice adult video for you guys to watch folks thank you for watching and commenting and subscribing i hope this helps who's ever putting an engine together if there are any questions please get back to me because if you smack your your valves um you can bend them over which is no good or sometimes you break these little arms off on one side or the other the other thing i i have a tendency to do when i'm setting my timing see the way this screw see the way that's backed all the way out you can see perhaps better right there i have a tendency to do that um just to make sure that I'm not going to screw the timing up and and um, mess things up right so I have a tendency to back them all the way out a little bit this is also from a head that I was having trouble there was so much erosion on this head see how the um, the edge of the valve I'm gonna call it washer retainer whatever was actually um, hitting this well, the reason why that was hitting it is there was so much erosion in the seat. The valve was riding so high that even if you backed off the adjustment screw, the, um, the valve retainer, that area of the valve, was actually hitting the rocker. So it just shows you that you should use an air filter. Otherwise, you create all kinds of erosion and get into all kinds of trouble. I hope this was helpful. Guys, any questions, please ask. And remember, man up, right, cam lobes down. It almost looks like those things you see uh, boys drawing, drawing the locker room in uh, high school, right? Or not in the locker room, in the, in the uh, cans, right? As they're sitting on the throne, they want to do graffiti, and that's kind of what the graffiti always looks like. All right, folks, thank you for watching and commenting and subscribing. Remember to keep your feet down. Please keep your heads up. Don't fall on the ice out there. And remember to enjoy all your days. Don't let any days get by on you. Make sure you have fun every day. Bye. Take care, folks.